Hello students, I've been asked to give you a video version of the most recent announcement, so here it goes, um, about the annotated bibliography. Let me just adjust my speaker here, because I'm getting a bit of a feedback loop. So, the annotated bibliography is probably the second most challenging assignment in this class. I always find that students struggle most with the annotated uh, bibliography assignment and the literature review assignment in week eight, even though these assignments have a very detailed assignment text and rubric. I mean, they pretty much lay it all out for you folks. So you can know very specifically and transparently what you are expected to do and what I'm required to grade by. Precisely because of Brownman structuring their classes on the theory of scaffolding, of which I've already talked, in which each week's assignment builds on the previous assignment and gets steadily more challenging, some students in the past have been lulled into complacency by the earlier assignments, assuming that the later assignments will be as easy as those, and then are abruptly shaken by my feedback and my grading, unfortunately, when I hold them strictly accountable for fulfilling the demands of these assignments. One common mistake is that people seem to assume that both of those are research papers and write them as such. In a research paper, you should attempt to come to a new insight into a particular question, whereas an annotated bibliography and a literature review are retrospective and more focused on evaluation and analysis. A bibliography is oriented around specific texts, while literature review is a survey of the current state of expertise on a given topic. More specifically, on the annotated bibliography, there are some things to look for and to watch out for. As per the rubric for this assignment, I'm expecting six sites to scholarly sources, monographs or journal articles. Quantity of sources counts for 20 points. One source less, five sources, and you total only 16 points. Two or three less, you total 14 points, etc. Quality of sources counts for 50 points, and that calls for a thorough crop CRAAP analysis. I am being um, informed by my furry TA that the CRAAP analysis is immensely important. Okay, now I can write her off my taxes. Um, so you're supposed to do, do a thorough CRAAP analysis on each of the sources you cite. Fluency of annotation counts for 80 points. Now, I'm required to evaluate these on the basis of whether the annotations are thoughtful, well-developed, and well-written. In terms of this assignment, well-developed means that you address three points in each annotation. One, a summary of the source, but the summary should only be one sentence long. In the past, many students have erred by making their annotation, annotations almost entirely summary. Also, so far, I've been seeing people uh, give me two or three uh, sentences of summary when that's not really what's called for. Um, an assessment of the quality of the source. Well, folks working at least a few references to CRAEP analyses criteria. A statement of how the given source specifically addresses your research question. I've also had all too many students in the past leave this for me to infer. It's best to be specific as to how and to what extent the given source addresses your question instead. APA citation formatting stuff, folks, is getting real. On this assignment, I'm specifically required to evaluate how you format your citations. It's crucial to provide all of the required information in the correct order and with the correct formatting. In the context of citation format, that it matters whether a given piece of information is required to be in regular text or italicized and or placed in parentheses. This part counts for 50 points. Further things to watch out for. Format. 
like the week four assignment, which was preparing you for this assignment, scaffolding once again, you should format it such that you have the citation in correct form, followed by an annotation for that particular work. Weaving together analysis of multiple sources or placing the citations at the end of the paper does not comply with the requirements of this assignment. At the top of the paper, you are to write your research question in full. Do not include encyclopedia or dictionary sources of any kind. So let me know if you need any further clarification or elaboration on the expectations of this assignment, either by emailing me at lgeitner at brownman.edu or posting on the class question board. One more thing I probably should elaborate. Uh, someone uh, posted a question uh, or sent me an email and asked for clarification about this one paragraph that I just read to you, where I state that in a research paper, you should attempt to get a new insight into a particular question, whereas an annotated bibliography and literature review are retrospective. Okay, here's the thing. In scholarship, one of the major things, uh, truisms is publish or perish. We're always looking to get published. And, um, but writing a scholarly essay that is worth being published in a peer reviewed journal is a very labor intensive process. And thus we have a couple of preliminary stages before that we get to go through before we get to a um, research paper. Let me give you an example. My background is in law and religion. I have a doctorate in law and a master's degree in religion, ABD, all but doctorate. I'm getting really close folks. Um, so a lot of my publications deal with issues about law as it is found either within a given religion or law as our legal system has engaged with and encountered different major world religions. So let me give you an example of one thing that I'm working on in terms of publication, how each one of these phases would be involved. Now, I won't go into the details here, but suffice to say that uh, I've been doing a lot of research on uh, two different forms of religious law that I find have very striking similarities. Halakha, which is Jewish religious law, and Brehan law which was the law that was promulgated in the Celtic community in Ireland and Scotland. Uh, the Brehans were a specialized subset of the Druids who were in charge of adjudicating uh, controversies. And one thing that I've found very striking in reading about both these types of religious law is that there are some very interesting structural similarities. And I've been doing research on that when I can find the time for the last year or two. Now, how does that apply to a annotated bibliography and a literature review? Well, let's say that I'm working on this project, but I'm not really quite, I don't have everything pulled together yet, but I need to get something published. Well, if I found lots of good resources on Halakha and on Brehan Law, I might publish an annotated bibliography. This would give uh, a citation and proper citation format, along with an annotation where I would explain why I think this is an important and valid source. Now, but that's not really a full research paper. That's the start of a research paper. And you can get annotated bibliographies uh, published in scholarly journals, although that's not the default. And what's not, it's kind of a placeholder if you're in the midst of a important research project. Once you have an annotated bibliography, what's the next step? Well, you need to read your sources and conjure up a picture of what the current state of the art, the current scholarship has to say about a given topic. 
Um, and that's where we get a literature review. A literature review is not trying to set forth any new concepts. It's just trying to summarize the current state of knowledge on a given question or in a given field. Both of those are not research projects, papers, because they are retrospective. They're not trying to establish anything new. They are just giving uh, goalposts on the way towards a research paper. Now in this class, there isn't a research paper. I'm not looking for you to do what's involved in a research paper, which of the annotated bibliography and a literature review are important steps towards. The annotated bibliography is retrospective, but oriented around sources. The literature review is retrospective, but it's trying to summarize the current state of knowledge in a given field. And in scholarship, what we're constantly looking for uh, and striving for is to find something that no one else, a uh, question that no one else thought, has thought about uh, or come to a um, different understanding, a different perspective on something that other people have questioned. But what we're looking for is original research. And the way that you get to the point where you can write a work that has original research, which is the goal of scholarship is first reviewing the sources, the annotated bibliography, and then pulling together and creating a picture of the current state of knowledge in a given field. So how would that apply in my case? Let's say that I'm reading up on Halakha and Prahan law. I might write an annotated bibliography and uh, with annotations um, summarizing important sources on both of these fields of religious law and setting forth why they're important and why I think these sources are reliable and valid. I might then publish a literature review, which would be retrospective. What is the current state of knowledge in both these fields to date? And has anyone else ever thought to compare Halakha to Brehan law, for example? Only once I've done those, oh, and people can, scholars do sometimes publish literature reviews. Um, only once I've done that, both those steps, can I finally get to around to the point where I write a research paper where I would be trying to formulate a new perspective or pull together sources that no one else ever thought to pull together to come to a new picture of how different um, forms of religious law um, come about, why there might be similar structures, why uh, whether or not the one might be related to the other, um, or whether or not this is an instance of independent origination, which is to say that sometimes we find similar patterns in different areas that where this, the knowledge in question, there was no discernible interaction. So then we look at environmental factors to try to figure out why let's say that Brahman law and Halakha have similar structures. Well, what about the given societies at this given time might account for why their legal systems might have the same or very similar structure? So that's just one example. A annotated bibliography and a literature review look backward. They are retrospective. They are looking at what has been established so far. And those are both important steps that you need to go for, for through in scholarship before you get to writing a research paper. And it's those steps that we're doing in the last three weeks of this class. So I hope that's clarified the issue for the uh, person who asked me. And uh, if you want any further elaboration or clarification, feel free to send me an email and I will be glad to respond. Ciao for now.